Dr. Gerespina, functionalanatomyseminar.com. Uh, today I want to follow up uh, with a video post that I put up uh, maybe a couple weeks ago regarding uh, posterior glenohumeral joint fibrosis, which is a really, really common condition. Um, what I'm going to show you today, on the last video we showed you how to do a sleeper stretch more effectively in order to stretch out that posterior capsule. Today I'm going to uh, show you a, a really effective mobilization that I use uh, in order to uh, create some motion and break up some of the fibrosis in the posterior capsule. Uh, I call this the, the Kimura Mobe. Um, it's actually named after a, a joint lock that's performed in, uh, in competitive jiu-jitsu. Um, but what it does is it takes the, the uh, glenohumeral joint to end range and internal rotation, thereby stretching the posterior capsule. So the positioning is a little bit complicated, um, so we're going we're gonna to move through it slowly. And just to let you know, this exact same uh, mobilization or a very small variation of it can be used uh, for hip capsular fibrosis as well, and maybe I'll post on that shortly. Uh, but what I want to do here is I want to have the person's arm bent at 90 degrees. I'm going to take the arm closest to the patient and I'm going to grip his uh, wrist, just like this. Now with my elbow, I'm going to push the elbow down onto his glenohumeral joint, the anterior part of the shoulder. And what that's going to do is it's going to stop the shoulder from rotating forward when I go into internal rotation. Often with uh, posterior glenohumeral joint fibrosis, when you take the, the patient into internal rotation, what will happen is the capsule will tension, thereby bringing the shoulder forward in order to compensate for a lack of glenohumeral motion. The whole scapula will come forward. So that's why this is such an effective mobilization because with my elbow, I'm going to push down on the scapula, or sorry, on the shoulder as I'm doing it. So I grab the front, or the back aspect of the wrist, and then the elbow goes down. Now with my other hand, I'm going to feed my arm through, so that I'm kind of have I'm elbow to elbow here. I'm feeding my arm through, and then I'm going to contact my own wrist. So now with this position here, what's going to happen is with my hand, I'm going to control how much internal rotation is occurring, and with my elbow, I'm going to lean down onto his shoulder. So you want him to be pretty much squared off with the table, okay? So I'm pushing down, I'm grabbing my own wrist, I'm leaning into his shoulder, and now with this hand, I'm going to control the mobilization by pushing down in this fashion. So you see it prevents that anterior motion. Now, like I talked about with the sleeper stretch, because when you just go into this position, the muscles uh, oftentimes will, will block you or prevent you from actually stretching the capsule, you can use some post-isometric um, contraction techniques in order to eliminate the, the barrier of the muscle. So in this position, I'm going to tell him to push into my hand, so push backward, and I'll hold, and then relax, and again, and relax. And as soon as you do that, and you get to a point where the contract relax no longer causes further internal rotation, now you know you're actually stretching the capsule. So once I'm in that position, I'm going to hold it for a very, very long period of time, and I'm going to push with this right hand as the tissue begins to allow me to go further and further, I'll push more and more. The whole time keeping pressure with my elbow onto the shoulder to prevent anterior translation of the scapula. Okay, so that's uh, the Kimura mode, and it's indicated for posterior glenohumeral joint fibrosis.